Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts Repair. Why am I zoomed in? That's silly. Alright, try this again. We got a project. Uh, that 775G, if that's not what it was, that's what it's going to be. Again, it was either a 770 or 775. But based on that threaded crankshaft, the clutch, the clutch side of the crankshaft was threaded. It's either a 770 that has been updated or it's a 775. So, long story short, uh, custom chainsaw parts on eBay had just about everything that I needed. And that was a lot. That was a lot. Uh, his prices were actually very reasonable on everything that I needed, but in the end, I ordered a clutch because that spider was completely destroyed ordered the large gear what would that be the driven gear yes the driven gear ordered one of those brand new uh, the throttle handle I went ahead and ordered because he had a 775 G handle with a uh, serial tag so I will have a serial plate on this thing uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, the starter ratchet assembly the bottom or the top plate the retainer plate was cracked on the one I have and distorted might be repairable but I picked one up that he had anyway just to be safe and I feel like I'm forgetting something what else was there there was something else it doesn't matter 150 bucks later or very close to got all that stuff so, the saw is completely disassembled at this point. It is completely cleaned for, and prepped for paint. So I want to go through this process. And this would be, it's going to be a long video no matter what. I'm going to use a lot of fast forward as I'm doing certain things that are just monotonous. But I kind of wanted to go through what we're up to. So, like I say, it's been disassembled. The parts are hanging, heating up. Uh, I've used a combination of a, a ton of degreaser and hot water and then brake cleaner. I've sent what is going to be painted through the blast cabinet using aluminum oxide. If you guys are interested in that, I've got older videos on the blast cabinet that talk about that. Same thing with some of the painting stuff. I'm not going to get real deep into that. Uh, I'm going to just go through the process of what I'm doing on this saw. So, let's get you guys off the, whoop, off the stand here. Okay. So what's not getting painted is the stuff that's over here. We've got the bar plates, sprocket, the cylinder, which, look how nice that cleaned up. That was a combination of a little bit of media blasting carefully around that muffler mount and then most of this was in the ultrasonic cleaner and then been blasted same thing with the carb i still need to go through this but it's been cleaned up pretty well look at that spike that i just blasted and then ran over my wire wheel it actually brought some shine back to it with the wire wheel flywheel that's just hot water and the uh, ultrasonic cleaner so again those parts are what getting painted. That's the old throttle handle. I'll use some parts off of it, like the throttle, excuse me, the throttle lock. But uh, that was another reason I decided to use custom chainsaw parts uh, throttle handle, was this one's got a lot of water damage to it. And so why not? Are hanging right here. So let's go through, I'll try not to get too close. The, the crankcase, I mean, this saw has been road hard and put away wet. I mean, look at some of the chain rash back there. That's what that is, it's chain rash. It didn't go through the case, though, and I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to prime the hell out of this and paint it and seal it up. You see the handle bracket's been repaired. That's pretty dark, sorry about that. That might be a little better. But yeah so you guys are seeing this is when i paint a saw i'm gonna do it right the only bearing i couldn't get out was this sprocket bearing so 
I put the washer and bolt over it to try and keep crap out of there and paint. But, uh, yeah, you, you got to disassemble it. I've left the, the old cylinder gasket in place to help me avoid painting that surface. This one I can just razor blade off again when I'm ready to reinstall. But I'd rather gasket to bare metal. You'll see that I don't blast everything. If I'm not going to paint it, I'm not going to blast it. I don't need to do the inside of the gear case. I've just cleaned it up. Same thing here. I'll razor blade this surface clean before I seal it. New gear cover. That was the other piece. That was the other piece that came from Custom Chainsaw Parts. Yeah. Actually, I'll just hang that down here. That part will be covered with the cover here so I'm not not gonna blast that sorry if that was a fast camera move I'll try to avoid doing that <laughs> not all the paint is completely off in certain areas it's hard to get it blasted but it's good enough okay trust me it's it's good enough and then yeah you can get the throttle trigger that is the muffler cover. That's going to get some high heat silver. One damaged piece that I think I'm going to reuse is this intake elbow. There was actually a big crack all along there, so I've got some JB Weld on it. That'll blend right in with the paint, and it's a little character. I mean, this saw is going to look good, but it's still going to have its battle scars. So why are they hanging there? Well, it's 41 degrees outside, and it's 2 o'clock, and... Uh, this is the warmest part of the day. So, I want to warm these parts up so I can prime them. 60 degrees. 56. That one's the last piece that I cleaned. 56. 53. That one's hanging pretty far away. 55. You guys get the picture. You see what I'm up to. I want to warm them up. The cans of primer are in beside the fireplace and they've been there since last night. So, those are warmed up. That little heater is uh, allowing me to spend some more money with Pacific Power. Bless their hearts. Obviously, I'm not going to primer those hanging there. I will take them down one at a time spray them outside, bring them back in, leave this heater plugged in until the primer is actually dry and I will hang them across my XP1130 which has been the hanger for so many so many chainsaws that have been uh, repainted and then of course the caps I can't hang so they're heating up and I'll set them on a piece of cardboard before I prime them. The ultrasonic cleaner I don't know that that's made an appearance on the channel. That is a cheap piece of crap. Central machinery, it doesn't actually work that well. But it works well enough. Those are some parts that I ran through on a, about a cycle and a half. And if nothing else, it loosens stuff up to the point where I can get it off now. The heater works really good in it. You can see it's steaming away there. The ultrasonic portion of it, I'm not convinced it is working at all. But... I don't know. I don't have a lot to compare to, and I'm not going to spend high dollar on one just to, to do this to it. So, anyhow, that's what we're working with. That's our baseline. It is going to take me several weeks to, uh, to get this as I trip over my shop stool. Uh, it's going to take me several weeks before we're ready to reassemble. The primer is going to probably cure for a week. And the paint will go on next weekend, providing that the weather isn't terrible. Uh, and then assuming that the, uh, the decals come in that I ordered from Sugar Creek, it'll probably be two weekends out that I get those put on and then blast the Spray Max 2K Glamour on there. And then that's got to set up for at least 24 hours before I can handle it and then start putting it together but given that that's going to be in you know 
it, it'll be ready to handle in the middle of a work week. So it may be we're at January what seventh. January 7th today. It'll be interesting to see how much before the end of the month before I get this video posted. But I'm not going to waste any more time blabbing. I'm going to set up, get a few shots of the primer process, and uh, yeah, we're going to be off to the races, folks. <laughs> All right, and there we have it. Yeah, you're looking at some of the, the stuff that I primed spots intentionally, and, and like over here where I intentionally went light, all I wanted to do was wrap the edge. Again, I said I did not want to paint the inside of the gear case, or I'm not going for full coverage in there. So I have very little coverage. I have overspray. But the parts that I want, in the places that I want, now I have a nice coat of primer on them. So again, these are going to cure. I'm not going to have an opportunity to paint again until next weekend. Uh, so at that point, I'll warm up the, uh, the red that I use and everything else is on my website under the restoration section but that is not I have never been able never had the time or taken the time to update the red I finally settled on is Chrysler Duplicolor engine enamel it's the DE 1632 it's just that stuff and it does the best job I don't think I have anything laying around oh yes I do hold on hold the apple cart that's what I did my XL500 in so that's what it comes out looking like although this is obviously a used tank so that's what that saw is going to look like I'm going to use it's on the website, the Metal Specs Green, for the green accent parts, which are actually quite a few. Ooh, there's a part I forgot to prime. And I'll have to do it later. But this saw, of course, was missing its starter cover. Ah, oh, crap. Figures. When it's on camera, I can't find anything. I've got one of the uh, reproduction starter covers, the ashtray dog dish whatever you want to call it that'll that'll top that off so anyway that's the priming process paint will come next
All right, we're ready for the fun part. So remember what I said earlier in the video that it may take numerous weeks to get to this point. Today is Saturday, January 27th. So I wasn't, wasn't too far off. Uh, last night couldn't be more perfect. Uh, got home around seven o'clock, still 53 or 54 degrees here. I'd had those parts under the heater for, I don't know, last three days, I think. Just banking, hoping that I'd get that right day. Wind wasn't too high, so like I said, got home from dinner with wife and kids. Shot this clear, so it's been in place for somewhere around 14 or 15 hours now. More than enough to handle it. Now, you can still scratch it. You know, if you do something dumb, you can absolutely damage it. But you can handle it without leaving fingerprints. And it's still soft enough that you can work on it, set some screws, and you're not going to crack, you know, big chunks of it out. Uh, later on down the road, after about a week of cure time, generally is what I see. About a week. That's when you get into it. That's when it's really good and set up, and when you start cranking screws too hard, you can crack some, you know, decent pieces off of it. So, certainly not a perfect solution, but it works. So, we're going to get into this. Uh, as much as we can. My goal is to assemble most of the saw this weekend. Uh, what I neglected to do, because I still haven't got it removed, is I haven't ordered a new bearing for the uh, actual sprocket shaft yet. And this thing is just a little too rough for my liking, so uh, I'm going to order a bearing, and I think the way I'm going to get this out, I've already got the retainer ring out, I'm going to assemble some of the saw. I don't want to deal with it just yet. I want to get a, a stable working platform where this thing will support itself. And I'm going to use a bolt and a large... I'm going to get a large chunk of pipe from Home Depot, I think. Because I don't have... I just don't have a puller. I don't think I have a puller... That's set up. I mean, you guys know what we would need here. We need to run a bolt all the way through from the back and have something pressing right here, and then you're pulling that out. That's the way this is going to have to come out. So, yeah, like I say, I don't want to screw up, screw up a new paint job, but I also want a stable platform to work with here. So, what we're going to do right now is some cleanup. And by cleanup, I mean where we have old gaskets and possibly paint under those old gaskets. Because you don't want that kind of junk screwing up the seal on this engine. So I'm just going to clean this up. And at some point, I'll hit fast forward because scraping gaskets is not the most exciting content. That is good enough. Notice the nice little pile of debris. I don't want that in a new engine. Or rebuilt. Whatever we're calling this. I don't really care. There's still a little scraping to do right over here. Notice, I'm not taking all the paint off of this surface. It doesn't matter. The gasket will conform to that just fine. I just took any high spots anywhere I thought there might be a little bit of that old gasket off. Same thing on the cylinder here, uh, where the cylinder gasket will mate. You don't need shiny metal. I mean, the, the gasket is gone. That's just discolored, you know, metal alloy. So, no big deal there. So, our next step is going to be to install a crankshaft seal. 
we are replacing those. So I'm going to select a socket. That works. I've already cleaned the old one out. Or removed the old one, cleaned the recess out. And we're going to tap this thing in place because it's a lot easier now than when the crankshaft is installed. Fairly straight. There we go. Come on, baby. This one's easy to set the depth on. You drive it in till it stops. Not every home light is like that. This one is. We're lucky. And I will take luck. So as we install the crankshaft to prevent damage to that seal, I want a little bit of oil on the seal. and the crank itself. And you don't have to get crazy with it. There we go. Okay. And here is where Progress will slow to a crawl. Ah, guys, I forgot to grab the clutch. And I will continue using this old clutch. Now, for purposes of installing things, that's what that spider looked like when I got it out of there. I know I have a new one. New to this saw. <laughs> I'll be damned if I know where it's at. Probably in the box there. I say I ordered a bunch of parts from from custom chainsaw parts up there in Washington. He had an awful lot of what I needed in stock, which was pretty damn nice. So I keep a selection of little chunks of pipe and flat washers and hell I've even got an old bearing that I use for for stacker material if I need to so what we're gonna do is just make a mountain I don't know if I like that that's gonna push yeah we'll start with those we're gonna stack a mountain of washers there and use the clutch itself pull this crankshaft back in. Now if it was a real pain in the neck you could freeze the crank with that bearing on there first. That one's going to fit too tight so I don't want to do that. Do not want to risk damaging this crankshaft. Even if I could find a replacement, which I probably could. I don't want to. I don't want to spend money that I don't have to spend. Know what I mean? Alright. One more would be nice. One more. And I may not have one more of that size. Well, pooey. Let's see. I may already have too many on there. That's right, this is a gear drive. I think it's going to be a standard thread. Yep. And with that recess and the hub there, I've got too many in there already. Come on. Straight. 
great enough. Well, this is going smooth. I'm actually a little bit confused. What are you doing? To avoid damage to anything for now, I'm going to use a ratchet instead of the rattle gun. And what you've got to do is stop the crankshaft from turning as you tighten the clutch. And depending on how hard this bearing goes in, you may have to stick a piece of wood in here because after a while it get real rough on your fingers trying to do what I'm doing. So far so good. Okay, like I can say this is watch like watching paint dry. But you can see once it starts pulling in, it'll straighten itself up and just pull in. So I'm going to finish this. Okay, you guys may have gotten the distinct impression that that was a pain in the neck. You would be correct. Not any fun. But it's in there, rolls over smooth, and it didn't damage the crankshaft by banging on it. I won't say that I've never done that. But on something this old, you are asking for some trouble. Now we're going to set in our retainer screws. Looks cool. Got a crankshaft in. Not much of a chainsaw yet, though, is it? All right. I'm go ahead and get this connecting rod on, but I want to get another clean towel. Before I stored that, I put a whole bunch of well, not a whole bunch, but 
see I sprayed some PB Blaster in there just to keep everything nice if I'd accidentally gotten moisture on anything. I wanted it to go away. And if I had garbage on anything, I wanted it to clean up. These journals look good. So now we're going to start that ever so fun routine. Of getting this back in place. Now with the piston off it's a little bit easier and the reason is you don't have to worry about which way it's clocked. As we know we want our piston to be installed so that the closed side of the wrist pin is pointed towards the muffler on most saws. Now this one with an outlet up front, it's okay. I know that I drove it this way. I'm going to have the open side to the clutch. That's easy enough, but I don't have to worry about that clocking with this rod off. All I've got to worry about is the fractured end of the rod and making sure when I put it together, those ends match perfectly. If I tried to install it like that, we wouldn't get very far. If I install it like that, we're perfect. So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dry this off as best I can from the oil, at least on that surface. Do a nice layer of clean bearing grease. Line up all those needles and do the thing that we have to do in order to get that in there. But that's what you've got to do. And now, I don't know that I have my, yep, that's matched. Oh, there we go. And the fun begins. That one wants to keep falling off. See how many times this takes. Never know. So I want to load this from this side. See if I can keep that one needle from slipping on me. Man, this is a tight fit. I forgot. On this one, the counterweights actually interfere quite significantly with this. So that needle that keeps coming loose is going to be a real pain in my neck. So that's going to get a little more stage use there. These cranks that don't have extra counterweights you can just slip it in and this one I'm going to have to turn at a pretty odd, pretty odd angle. Wow. Not sure I've ever worked on one of these crankshafts. Okay. Now that it's in place. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Try and use my fingers, which are too big, to fit in here appropriately, to hold that in place. 
gonna set that down. Now, if I'm lucky beyond reason, I could spin this down, and we won't have any risk of dropping a needle. Whoo! That's the only thing that goes right today. Well, hell, that's a good one to have go right. Okay. Ha! Huh. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Good and tight on these. Don't round out the head of the screw. That's too tight when you do that. Ha! All right. Now, where? <laughs> there it is. There's that other wrist pin retainer. Like, come on, I know it was there. Piston is clean. We've got a little bit of wear. This was probably from ingesting some dirt, because that's on the, the intake side. Tiny bit of wear. No. Carbon. Sorry, guys. Carbon. The intake side will be right here. A little bit of scratching there. This would have been carbon down by the muffler, which has been cleaned out. So... Let me get my tapper tool here. Most of the time these wrist pins you can just kind of tap them into place and not have a problem with them. And the way I do that is I've got a little bit of the pin in there that I can index into the bearing and now I'm holding the connecting rod to avoid putting sideways pressure on those needles that we just got in. And once it starts a little bit more, there we go. Can't uh, cat cannot come out now. I can't speak today. We'll use Mr. Scrap 2x4, I think, to help us finish this off. Get the right angle. There we go. Now we can just gently send it home. Just like Happy Gilmore. I hope at least a few of you get that reference. You too good for your home? Movie may have been stupid, but I love it. Come on, baby. Don't make me say it. distorted from the removal process. I want to make sure there. Make sure it's in the groove. I've heard of those retainers coming out while an engine's running. And I don't necessarily think that's something I want to experience. In fact, I'm rather certain it is not. All right. We are making some progress. ready for a cylinder gasket. 
And yes, if one of you guys are doing these, I have more in stock. They are on the website. Well, I'm in here, I suppose I ought to get that backplate gasket out, which, yes, I have more in stock, and they're on the website. These gaskets have gotten a little bit tougher to find in some cases. I don't know if Little Red Barn is reproducing them yet or not. These may be a low, you know, low sales item enough that he won't. I have no idea. Okay, dummy. What the hell are we doing here? What's the... It's the right part number, but what am I... Ow. <laughs> okay. My brain functions some of the time. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. How about that? Alright. My cylinder has been cleaned rather thoroughly on the exterior. But I can't actually remember cleaning it on the inside. So we're going to do that. Because the last thing that I want is any kind of foreign material in this cylinder. I'm going to start with a dose of brake clean on everything. You know, the design of the cylinder was actually fairly advanced, I think, for its day. Uh, and the reason I say that is those are actually closed transfer ports. See that? Not too many of home light saws. In fact, I can't think of another one of this age that uses a closed port. I don't think the 900 series did. Maybe they did. If they did, it's something that I haven't noticed. We'll put it that way. Okay, so now we're going to do the oil bath. oil can pick up what perhaps brake clean will miss. Don't be afraid to waste some paper towels on this process if you need to. Getting it clean is far more important well, than losing a paper towel or two. Okay. I'm looking specifically at the transfer ports, looking for any, like, that little chunk of paper towel that just became a piece of exhaust. I don't want that trash in there. I also don't appear to have cleaned up the gasket surface totally yet. See what I mean? We don't want that trash interfering with the seal of a new gasket. Okay, the final step is the actual assembly oil. And you don't, again, have to get carried away, but you want a nice light coat so that nothing gets marred on assembly. And we're going to do the same for the piston rings. Nothing extreme. It'll smoke a little bit on startup. Assuming I actually start this, I haven't actually decided that yet. I may not. We'll see.
Okay. It's not quite straight. There we go. Let's see how this goes. I may need to put an oil line in place before we can bolt the cylinder down. Ooh. There she goes. Quick and suck. Leave it like that for the moment. Because that oil discharge line routes through here, and I'm not convinced. Damn. That's why I printed a copy of the IPL that I could get all filthy and nasty and not really give a rip. That is showing that going in afterwards, but let's just see. Okay. I did what I shouldn't have done. And I have mixed some stuff up. So, that is the oil plunger assembly and the pickup assembly, and I'm pretty sure that's the elbow that goes in there. Even a little thing like that can throw you when you're two or three weeks out from having torn a saw down. Okay. That block is fairly clean, a little bit distorted from installation at some point, but I'm not trying to make this a absolute showstopper. It'll look pretty damn good. But it's going to be evident that it was a warrior that was repainted. That doesn't pay. All right, that's roughly straight. Now we need to clean that oil line up. And I'll tell you, my favorite for a lot of this is our old pal acetone. Now, obviously, around fresh paint, you want to be a little bit careful. But when it comes to taking layers of grease and sap and crap like that off. It's like a Dr. Seuss book, sap and crap. I suppose Dr. Seuss wouldn't appreciate that if he was around to hear it. Oh well. If you really want to go crazy with these you can take some Brasso or uh, Mother's Aluminum Polish and really make these lines shine. Even beyond what the acetone will do. I just want to get it clean. That's that's all I'm looking for. Some old silver paint. It's coming off there. Alright. See, that's acceptable to me. I can test my... Alright, there would have been room. We're... There will be. Alright, we'll go ahead and bolt the cylinder down. That was my biggest concern was that that was going to have to drop down in there and I wouldn't be able to once the cylinder was in place. Super XL has a little quirky one like that. Okay. 
square. There's my seven sixteenths. I do recall that this is difficult to get the nuts in and out of if you slam the cylinder all the way to the deck. So we're going to start them all before we try to tighten any of them. All right, a lot of people ask me how tight do those cylinder nuts need to be. Even though it's not technical, don't get medieval on it. You guys can see what I'm doing. You know, I'm pushing hard, and if you can see your wrench distorting, or it just feels like, hey, it's getting tight, it's tight enough. That's why there's lock washers there. Okay. Turns over smooth. Sounds about right. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and drop this and cleaned up oil line in place right now while we're here and thinking about it. Which I think it just started. Yeah, there she goes. Good enough. I think I'm going to leave that slightly loose. But I am going to blow some compressed air through there and make sure that it'll expel air at the bar oil port. assembled saws that I blasted and painted where some media had plugged that up and that's a problem especially when you got it all together and you find out about it thankfully that's not the case here all right I want to close this engine up and safe it off at least the vast majority of it. We'll still have the intake open, but I want to put this back plate on. And I think I've got it clean enough. That bearing has been lubed sitting there, but we're going to put a little bit of oil in it. does not have an alignment pin. Hence it's possible for me to screw up the clocking of this. Even where the spark plug wire exits, that should be right. Yeah. Pointing to the up. Not gonna give me any more than that. Spark plug wire exits, goes up to the cylinder right there. The gasket's actually somewhat aligned there. Out by just a smidge. ignition back plate.
Come on. Dipstick. Yeah, I'm not convinced that's where that little clamp ought to be, but I'll figure that out later. These have been out more than once. I can tell by the amount of damage to them. Whoever installed them, at least at one point, wasn't using the right size screwdriver. But they're in good enough shape. None of these are torqued to their final setting. Be clear about that. But at least the engine is sealed up enough to not get damaged at this point. So that's a good thing. In fact, that's a great thing. I think I'm going to take a break and we'll come back. Okay, we'll get a little more going here. Go ahead and install the coil. Which, I guess, I'm going to cover up enough of these screws. Gosh. I just can't freaking remember. Yeah, it makes no sense for that clamp to be down there. Unless that was for the kill switch lead. Which is possible. Perhaps even probable. This is where I wish I had paid just a smidge better attention. And the inside of the points box didn't get messed up, so that's good, too. You want to have your retainer in before you start setting this in place. And that's the top cover here. Because you can't get it on, at least I don't think you can, once this is down in place. Let's get all these started. That's what this, huh, doesn't look like it would do a hell of a lot, but that's what it's for. Okay, let's see what else we can accomplish here. Did a little work off camera, obviously. Uh, got all this starter mechanism back on. I replaced it because the base plate on the old one was cracked. Now, it wasn't giving me any trouble until I pulled it apart which is, you know, the way it normally goes. But it's cracked in a couple of different spots, so it would have failed. Pretty much the washers were all that was holding it together. The bronze, or brass, is distorted, but it's not destroyed. If I could find a new base plate here, this would still be a good unit, so I'm not going to throw it away just yet. But it's not, not serviceable the way it is. It's not at this point. Like I say, it was still turning it over when we pulled it apart, but it wouldn't have for long. Uh, remembered, too late, got to do some extra work, that the uh, 
the kill switch lead needs to come out down here because it's got a kill switch on the oh on the intake elbow it's gonna be way out here so I'll route all that crap later got the governor in place and what I've discovered is Homelight didn't update their their IPL. It's still showing that there's a screw and an adjustment up here in the IPL, but this is complete. It does not need that. It doesn't have it on the part number that's spec for it. So instead of having a big spring on the rod, there's going to be a spring that goes to the carburetor and to a base plate on the carburetor, and that's it. So, again, I'm not super familiar with these. We're going to see how all that comes together and works. We'll see. About all I can say is we'll see. Nothing was there to begin with. So, I want to put the fan shroud on. What I'm trying to build up to is getting the front handle, the main handlebar on this thing, so that it has some sit-up on its own. And you can't put the main handlebar on without the fan shroud on. So I have repaired some threads that were in rather not good shape. And look at that. Not bad. I'm slipping the spark plug wire grommet in. I don't think I'm forgetting I don't think I'm forgetting anything here so I'm going to go ahead and get these screws started that bottom one is wallered a little bit that one's wallered a little bit That one is not. So that one is going to dictate where this goes. It looks like I need one more. The screws that came out were all different sizes and different threads. I am attempting to put it back together with what Home Light specified. And that shroud there might make it a bit of a pain when I go to put muffler parts on, but I don't think I care. I'm going to keep this up as much as I can. Real thing wouldn't. Okay. That's looking better. I'm gonna say I want to try and get this thing to stand up. Although I'm gonna need a throttle handle for that. Oh, I don't know. We'll just keep doing what we're doing. I did test for spark, and it's got great spark. Just like when it came apart, so that's a good thing. I'm trying to remember if there's any any downside to getting the carburetor in place. And I don't think there is. We need to do some cleanup on this handlebar.
me. Okay, didn't do any new damage to that handle bracket mount that was already kind of in bad shape, so that's good. And that'll provide some protection, even though it's in the way, it'll provide some protection. So, I am happy. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm happy with that. That, just right. Wow, this thing's coming together, folks. It's not bad. I think I'm going to set this back, though. I think it's time to play with the carburetor. Yeah, see, that's... Setting that that new governor spring. Huh. Well, hopefully, I'll find it at some point. That's what has been done with it right here, and that, to me, looks yeah, it's stretched a little bit. Could be worse. I'd like to put the new one in. If I can figure out what in the world I did with it. What do you think? Are we going to get lucky? And get the inlet needle not to leak and that cover. Okay, the inlet just popped. And then it stops right at about five. Well, it did the last time. Oh yeah. There it is. It pops right around eight, so I can live with that. I'm gonna count that as getting lucky. So oh dummy. I'd really like to know. Hell, I did with that spring. I probably set it somewhere and thought, oh boy, I set it here, I can't lose it. Well, I'm going to assemble it with the old spring for now. Well, it looks like it's been janked a little bit. But, I need to find the screws. 
Fantastic. supposed to route that. This kill switch lead is going to come back to bite me if I'm not careful. That's a tough one to get to. Real just read it. Bring that Slipping the screwdriver and making a mess of the paint. Adam could have done without. Alright, that should be tight. If we connect this governor. Alright. Yes, I don't like that. I'm going to have to route that so that it doesn't get jammed up in the Problem. Speaking of which, I wonder if there's a downside to having the throttle on before the fuel tank. I know there's a downside to not assembling this throttle first. So we're going to do that. Yeah. Well, that's headed. Set it out of the way. So we used a new throttle handle, or at least new to us. What were those from? Oh, the cover. That's right. We need to put together all of this stuff We'll start by getting this thing apart. Okay. Something is missing there. The spring. I think I have one of these kits, new old stock. I think I'll grab that. Alright, I'll be brave and attempt to do this new throttle lock kit on camera. What's missing there is the spring, but everything's good and dirty and worn, so you got the spring, you got the throttle lock, set the spring in there. Grab the throttle lock the way I have. The spring is going to be captured underneath. In theory. Come on. There we go. It's compressed a little bit. So you're going to hold that. Go to the other side. And you gotta get that rivet set. And that is the hard part. I 
that actually could have turned out worse. A lot worse. Okay. Throttle pin is in there. I no longer need that old critter. Need a throttle trigger. Pushing where it belongs, the spring where it belongs, and you need to get the throttle trigger where it belongs all at the same time. And if you do that, you end up with, I think, that. That's fairly smooth. Really lucky. Something's hanging me up. I don't know how it's the throttle pin there. Plus the saw is for me. I can live with it. Hmm. I might have to might have to tighten that rivet up at some point. It does lock the throttle. It's rubbing just a little little bit in there. We'll see if it becomes a problem, I'll do something about it. Alrighty then. I am just wondering if I'm going to regret this. fuel tank after that. I don't see a big issue with it. At least then the thing would sit level. Well, the only way to know for sure And I don't think it should be. I wonder if I've got some remnants of okay, that keeps that out of the way of the throne. I wonder if I might have some remnants of the blasting material up in there. That wouldn't be the first time that I've had to deal with that kind of fallout. <sighs> 
seriously, can we just stop with the bull? slip screwdriver away from me not being a happy camper. Alright. Okay. Alright. Red coat is dry enough. I was able to put the fuel barb and the hose in. I'll let it dry a little more before I put the filter in the tank, but that's okay. I'm going to reassemble the oil pickup and the oil pump and all that sort of jazz. So, okay, that's a piece of gasket. The rest of all of this stuff. Pickup assembly goes in first, and that'll thread into place. And that was a little tough coming out because of that gasket, the tank gasket that's there. Okay, tight. Now we need a check ball, and I may be missing a spring. In fact, I am almost certainly missing a spring. And just like that, a spring appears. It's magic. Just like that, there's not a lot of time left on this camera. So either I've been taking forever to put this sucker back together, yeah, we'll go with that. I always think it's going to go quicker than it is. I know these take a while. I know that very, very well, but... working to me. That did not thread properly. That looks a little more proper.
Okay. The ultimate test. Let's see if that blows it everywhere. Yes, it does. We have got it. All right, I have got to empty this camera because we are out of memory. Okay, let's see if we can get this fuel tank or tank assembly, however you want to look at it, mounted. That'll make this look a lot like a saw. Too much here. It doesn't get a hell of a good crap. There is a spacer plate that's supposed to go in there. supposed to point up. Shoot. It's hanging down too low on the Those didn't have a washer on them of some sort. Huh, but it does not call for one. Guys, it is starting to look a little more like a chainsaw. Pretty exciting. I think before I get anything else in the way, we are going to get the muffler assembled for what it is. There ain't much real muffler to this.
they will find a little snog muffler element. All it is is some wire mesh inside a cage. Like I say, not really that much in the way of muffling is going on here. Also having trouble. Now yeah, carbon buildup. This was run without one for a while. That's what we got cooking here. Okay, we'll get a little bit more done. I think I've got everything prepped. I think. I hope. cylinder shield on just because it's going to make the saw look cool. And that matters sometimes. Just plain tight. I like it. Thing I don't like is I'm missing whatever little cap goes up here where there I guess at one point would have been a governor adjusting screw on earlier models and they didn't do it with the porthole here. But that's a detail I can figure out at some point. Wow. And I mean, wow. That just looks gnarly. Very nice. Okay. Let's see about stabbing myself with a booking spike. See about getting that intake elbow in place. I'm going to reuse one gasket that's a little bit distorted. But that's okay. And I have a new gasket uh, for the other side. Tell you what, my pile of parts in there is whittling down. Not a bad thing. Alright. So you slip that up in there first. Wow, what is... discovered a problem already. That strap is going to go on the outside, even though that is not what the IPL has to say. Hey. Well, that's an unexpected, oh crap. That's an unexpected complication. Because now I've got to get that back out without marring anything up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start this before I tighten that tank 100%. I had to tighten the bottom, these bolts are nuts because you can't get to them with that elbow in place. But you can. Get to the, the upper ones, of course. Yeah, that's how we're going to do this. This is going to be funky.
if the fuel tank hadn't been disturbed, probably would have made this a lot easier to just replace these gaskets if you were doing something like that. With new gaskets, fuel tank being disturbed, whole saw being disturbed, really. It's uh, kind of an alignment nightmare. But we'll get it. I'm threading that gasket on. There we go. That one's in place. Let's see if we can do this without any major catastrophes. Yeah, the angle's bad. That stupid mosquito. It's completely the wrong time of year for those things to be out, but finding somewhere to do their breeding. Oops, don't do that stupid, come on. Tell you what, I'm not sure that I like the fit. I know that I don't. This. I don't know what in the world is going on with this thing, but. Not at all like the fit there. Hell, not that I'm going to have a huge amount to work with. Seriously. you can do here. that. Still annoying. Yeah, I don't like that fit much at all. If that throat is bigger because of the the cart stuff. <sighs> I'm not sure I'm even going to be able to get those to start. Especially since they're not the right length. Boy, isn't this going well. Okay, some longer screws. Helped. I didn't say it's perfect, but it helped. Now we're back to playing this game. Tighten the tank.
Okay, we're getting there. We are definitely getting there. Let's put our starter together. I kind of got ahead of myself on this. This is not the easiest thing to do the way I'm doing it, but there we go. There we go. Because I didn't remember one being stripped out, apparently doesn't mean there wasn't one that was stripped out. The real question is, am I going to have any any 1032 inserts up there? That sucks. I can't do this without unwinding the starter spring. Winding it. Yeah, yeah, I was. All right. Looks like we're in luck. Gee, what do you say? Should we try that again? Okay, that's what I forgot to look for, was some more screws for that rope drum. jacked up. Alright, this has the pin. Align that. Right there. I think I might have even wound the rope in the right direction. Which would be a minor miracle. Sent this rope drum through the blast cabinet. 
had enough corrosion on it that it was going to make the rope stiff coming in and out and just be kind of a mess. I found it better in my estimation to go ahead and clean it up. And it doesn't feel like it's dragging. Okay. That's so much easier than fighting old wallered out screws. A little pretension. Is that enough? I think it is. Alright, that'll pull back strong. Now, yes, I am doing this the risky way by not tying it off. Gambling that I won't lose grip on that rope before I get a knot tied. Even some of my other escapades today. Maybe that wasn't the brightest, but looks like I got away with it. Come on, seat up. Did you ripping out? Not bad. Not bad at all. Now for the real question, did I set the decals straight on the starter cup? This is a reproduction starter cup. I have found them to be quite good in quality. Slip out. Oop, okay, getting there. Getting there. Don't break anything. That one clip. Oop, oop. Ha ha. Can't have fingerprints on that. The reason I loosen this screw is this bracket is just riveted. To the screen here, if you loosen it up, you can get a little sideways play to slip the cup in. Well, I was close, but not quite. A little bit off. <laughs> Maybe without the big spike, I'd have been dead on. I think it'd still have been off a little bit. But tell you what, folks, I don't care. It is what it is. <laughs> it ain't a perfect world. And this is not a perfect song. But it's shaping up to be a pretty good looking one. Not bad for a restoration. I do have the filter. And the gasket. Well, the gasket needs to pull up a little bit here. I'm not going to do, I'm going to put the filter in tonight, that gasket needs too much cleanup work. Give you guys a sense of what the completed product is going to look like. We can slip.
Get that retainer back on without bunging anything up too terribly bad. Probably at scale a lot. I'd hose that air filter out and had it sitting outside. Once I picked that up, I actually think a cat might have come through and taken a whiz on it. And I don't like that smell in my garage. I don't like that smell anywhere. If I found the cat that did it, well, that might be the last whiz that it took. I like the smell of acetone better than I like that. Ah, yuck! God, I hate cats. I should let me. Yeah. I don't like outdoor cats that roam freely through my neighborhood and crap in my grass and pee on my chainsaw parts. That's a decent enough qualifier. All right. Yeah, so that's that's what that's going to look like. I've got the cover plate. We don't have a fuel hose in place yet. <sighs> but man, is it coming together nice. Coming together real nice. So when we get to that point, I still need to pull those attempts at studs out because we're not doing that. That's what she's going to look like. This is going to be a good looking saw. I won't leave that on there. I don't have any clue what time it is. dark for at least an hour. I guess I have a clue what time it is. This video has gone almost as far as it can go other than you know seeing some assembly of a clutch and pulling that sprocket shaft in place. I'm actually tempted to end it here but in order to do that I think we need to hear, hear this thing bark. I was afraid of that. That damn gasket does not fit this carburetor properly. That sucks. That sucks a lot. Ah, I'm gonna have to put <laughs> I have to put the right carb back on here. That cart carburetor doesn't seal right. Now I know why they had so bloody much silicone on it. Was ever going to run this out in the woods, I wouldn't be able to like this. But I still want to hear this thing bark. You knucklehead. <sighs> I may not be able to do this tonight. But then again, I might be able to. Of course, it would help if I was actually getting some fuel in the syringe. Should have put some in there. 
let's see if it was enough. was enough. Alright. I don't think I can get any more fuel in there better than I did this time. We'll call that good. I'll do a follow-up quick video when everything is complete. I'm leaning against actually fueling this saw from the tank. This might become a display model in my office at work. I have no idea. Because I'm not sure how I'm going to resolve this carburetor fitment issue. Like I say, I totally understand now why there was silicone everywhere because it was a mess. But I hope you enjoyed following along on most of a rebuild, or restoration I should say, on a Homelite 775G. It's been quite an adventure. It's not quite done, but it's getting pretty close. <laughs>